In this video, we'll talk about the third type of immunocomplex vasculitis, which is cryoglobulinemia vasculitis. We'll see how do we diagnose it and treat it. So cryoglobulinemia vasculitis, you have to understand first how or what do we mean by cryoglobulin. So let's say there is a cause that causes immunoglobulin production to be increased. This type of immunoglobulin that is insoluble at low temperature, which we call cryoglobulin, that will precipitate in the tissues and causes complement activation and complement activation causes systemic inflammation and so vasculitis and glomerulonephritis as well. Now, you need to differentiate it from cold agglutinin, which is as well a cause causing IgM overproduction that will precipitate as well in low temperature and instead of causing complement activation, it will cause hemolytic anemia. Now, clinically, when do we think about cryoglobulinemia vasculitis if the patient presents with palpable purpura, which is a sign of vasculitis, mainly in the lower extremities? It's more in the adults compared to the IgA vasculitis, and you need to look for other manifestations that help you as well to think about it. First of all is Raynaud phenomena, which is as well nonspecific, but the patient will mention to you that it is much worse than someone else without the cryoglobulinema vasculitis, for example, SLE, or if it's a primary Raynaud phenomena, especially with low temperatures. They might develop ulcers and have much more severe symptoms. Now, then the other manifestations, also nonspecific, like arthralgia, weight loss, as well as neuropathy. Then we have a history of a cause and as we mentioned in the pathophysiology, this cause can be hepatitis C virus, which is present in around 85% of the patients with cryoglobulinemia, as well as hepatitis B virus, which is less associated with cryoglobulinemia versus hepatitis C virus. History of IV drug use, history of SLE, and history of cancer can also contribute or cause cryoglobulins to be elevated. Now, what labs we need to do to build our case? First one is rheumatoid factor. Rheumatoid factor is more sensitive in cryoglobulinemia than in rheumatoid arthritis. And its sensitivity can reach up to 95%. So it can be very useful to rule out the disease. Then we have the complement levels, which we mentioned will be consumed, so they will be low. ANA just to rule out other diseases like SLE as well as liver function test and hepatitis panel, of course, to look for the cause. As we mentioned, hepatitis C is present in around 85% of the patient. Cryoglobulin levels to confirm your diagnosis and to determine your management, as I'm going to mention in a second. So for diagnosis, you need clinical symptoms to be present, as well as lab abnormalities. You need cryoglobulins to be elevated and the complements to be low. Now for treatment, of course, we want to look at the cause and treat the cause. And usually, if there is an organ damage, then we have to add something else. So organ damage, we are talking about glomerulonephritis. If the patient develops strokes or pulmonary hemorrhage, then at that point, we need to add steroids and immunosuppressive medications, which include rituximab. If the patient does not have any organ damage, then NSAIDs and supportive management wound care can be enough. Now, there is an important indication for a plasmapheresis in these patients. If you check their cryoglobulin levels and they are above 10%, then this is an indication for plasmapheresis. And this is it for cryoglobulinemia vasculitis. See you in the next one.